principles of microbiology. So the first section is relates to natural and innate immunity. In other words, the inbuilt things that prevent us from getting infectious disease. It talks about barriers to infection and then phagocytosis and complement. So there are a number of things that are intrinsic to the human body that prevent infection gaining access, barriers to infection. So if you imagine a, the human body, it's continually surrounded by bacteria and viruses. And of course, we have a great deal of them within our own bodies. It's said that 90% of the cells in a human body are not human cells. They're bacteria or some other organism. And so there are things trying to get access to us all the time. But we, the skin is a good barrier. And then the skin has its own bacterial flora. And flora, we're realizing more and more the importance of bacterial flora in preventing infection. So the normal flora of the mouth, of the skin, of the gut, of the vagina, etc., all are there to, to outcompete other organisms and prevent the establishment of pathogenic infections. And we've become increasingly aware, I think, in the last few decades of the importance of normal gut bacteria. Gut bacteria were just seen as a problem in the past, as a source of gram-negative infection. But we've increasingly realized how they act, interact with the human to modulate the immune system. They have a function in developing the immune system and in suppressing other infections. So normal flora, terribly important. And then you've got barriers, for example, stomach acid, vaginal acidity, urinary acidity, all of those that prevent many bacteria from passing. So there's a number of barriers through physical barriers. And then, of course, there's things like IgA, immunoglobulin A, in tears, in the mouth, in breast milk secretions, and in other secretions, which also prevents pathogenic bacteria getting access to the vulnerable parts of the body. So there's a number of barriers. Natural and innate immunity also includes those parts of the immune system which are not um, affected by experience over life. So there's the what's known as the adaptive immune system. So the immune system in which antibodies are generated, lymphocytes become um, adapted to a particular antigens, etc. That's the adaptive immune system. But there's also this innate immune system which functions whether or not there's been exposure to the antigen before. So phagocytosis by neutrophils, that continues regardless of um, experience, uh, previous antigenic exposure. And similarly, the complement system, once it's been activated, creates this, this picture here is supposed to show a, a membrane attack unit creating a hole within the bacterial cell wall so that the contents flows out and it lyses. That's part of the innate immune system, which is not dependent on adaptive immunity. So those are all inbuilt systems that help to prevent us becoming affected by infectious diseases.